name is Letizia Treves and I am the James and Sarah Sassoon curator of the later Italian, Spanish and 17th century French paintings here at the National Gallery and I'm absolutely delighted to talk to you today about our new acquisition, this self-portrait uh, as St. Catherine of Alexandria by Artemisia Gentileschi. Now Artemisia is without doubt the most celebrated female artist of the 17th century and it has been on our wish list here at the gallery to have a painting by her for a very long time and we're delighted to have had the opportunity now to buy this newly discovered work. And not only is it a work by Artemisia, but the fact that we have a self-portrait of the artist as well, it seemed like an opportunity too good to miss for us. Like Caravaggio, Artemisia Gentileschi's life story has somewhat overshadowed her artistic achievements. In 1611, when she was just 17, something happened that really changed her life, both professionally and personally. She was raped by the painter Agostino Tassi, who was a collaborator and acquaintance of her father's, Orazio. He'd been brought in to teach Artemisia the art of perspective. A long trial followed, and uh, we know the details of that trial because the documents survive, and we know that Artemisia was um, tortured, and she was uh, subjected to really grueling questioning. Um, Tassi was prosecuted, but his punishment was never enforced, and so Artemisia was married off quickly to a Florentine artist shortly afterwards, and she left Rome for Florence. And it's in Florence that she arrives in 1612 as a young woman, um, and it's the first chance that she can work outside of the shadow of her father as well. And it's from this period in Florence between 1612 and 1620 where she's sort of establishing her artistic independence that this picture dates. In this painting, Artemisia decided to portray herself as St. Catherine of Alexandria. Uh, the fourth century Saint St. Catherine uh, was tortured. She was tied to a wheel with iron spikes and she was miraculously uh, rescued um, by divine intervention. And here she is putting her hand on the wheel, the instrument of her torture. And you can see here that it's broken. And what I love about this picture is it, it shows her as um, a martyr saint. She's holding the palm. She was later beheaded. But actually, um, she, sh she shows her resilience, a sort of quiet resilience in this picture. It's at this time when Artemisia is working in Florence that she uses her own image quite a lot. Um, we see a number of, there are a number of self-portraits that survive from these dates and there are others that are recorded in inventories and described. Um, she was clearly a very beautiful woman and she would have been recognisable to people at the time. But there is a sense of kind of self-propaganda in these pictures. There was clearly a demand for them, but it's her very much promoting her image in Florence to this very kind of elite clientele at the Medici court. Um, and in this picture in particular, the way she puts her hand on the wheel, you know, she's actually survived the torture and she's come through. And I think it's that quiet determination and resilience, which one can't help but read into that also Artemisia's own story, that she survived a very difficult um, personal event in her life and she sort of came through. And her artistic career in this moment in Florence when this picture's painting really took off. Um, uh, she is painting really, she's finding her feet as an independent artist. She's the first woman to join the Accademia del Disegno delle Arti in Florence at the Artists' Academy. And the image so powerful and I, I loved it from the moment I saw it in a photograph. Um, I think she's so arresting the way she looks out of the picture. It has so much wall power and the picture's quite dirty and I think the cleaning and restoration will really bring that out, will bring out a lot of the three-dimensionality of the picture but I can't wait to hang it on the walls of one of my galleries but I can see her hanging quite comfortably next to Caravaggio, next to her father Orazio. Of course, she knew Caravaggio as a young girl. Her father was an associate of Caravaggio's. And I think she'd really hold her own next to these artists. Um, she, she's a very, very accomplished painter in her own right. Mm -hmm. 